makes a good stencil is what makes good art. A clarity of vision, a clarity of thought is one thing. Beauty is another. Something that makes you think. Also something that has a message. Promote an idea rather than a name or something else, something other than what your stencil's of. Something that's easily understood by a lot of people. Something that makes you smile or something that touches your heart. It engages your mind and you see that happening with political stencils. Melbourne has a really great art scene, it's really supportive and we're seeing like stencil walls, like legitimate places coming up where you can go and put up your art and you can do it at any time and you're not going to get arrested and you know, but then there's other councils that are giving free paint out to businesses to paint over graffiti. Society is more susceptible to uh, stenciling because it's more appealing than graffiti, it's more artistic, people are less likely to take offence to it. It crosses a lot of boundaries, it crosses like language barriers and they're quite simple and... They're more accessible to the average passerby, they're a more easily understandable medium. That stencil is a talking to the average the average person whereas taggers tend to be talking to other taggers and old school graffiti tends to be an in-house kind of a uh, kind of an approach whereas somebody who doesn't really know anything about graffiti can walk down the street and see a stencil and it can inspire them to think about a certain issue or a, like appreciate a certain aesthetic i think it's a huge dialogue I mean, it's, it's like all art is a dialogue and therefore it's communicating to the viewer, it's communicating to the landowner, it's communicating to the people who buff the walls, it's, communi it's communicating to the web surfers, it's communicating to you and to you, you know, it's communicating to everyone, it's all about dialogue. Like that's one of the things that I love about stencils is, is and street art is that hopefully, you know, it inspires other people to do something in their community or whatever because it's Doing street art is like reclaiming public spaces for the public, you know, it's an illegal act because some particular government or bureaucratic body says that you can't do that, but dialogue's going on definitely and to do with particular issues, you know, somebody might put up a stencil that somebody else reacts to, like we've seen a lot of John Howard and Philip Ruddock, stencils to do with refugees and boat people and coming along and that spawned, spawned on more stencils. <laughs>
or promoting stencil art and encouraging other people to do the same. I think people who say that it shouldn't be in there um, or it should stay on the streets, I think that's just a load of shit. People just have to like um, realise that stencil art is art and it should be in a gallery. My main motivation behind stenciling, especially on the streets, is to basically make a statement and say, I was here. Fuck you. I choose to do stencils because I really like um, the aesthetics of it. I like the whole process of doing it. I like going out at night and putting them up, just basically to have an impact on my environment, to go out and put something up that hopefully maybe someone will think is inspiring or they'll appreciate its form or you know whatever. And I think that yeah, stenciling in that way is like important to hopefully show people that you can kind of reclaim public space, you can do something that it's illegal but you can still go out and do it and have an impact. Personally I stencil as a response to my environment and in some sense it's alienating. Hard surfaces, concrete, asphalt, tar, these things are unfriendly. I want to soften that space, I want to make it somewhere that people want to be. I don't want it to be unfriendly, I don't want it to be skyscrapers and concrete. I want it to be small pictures and treasures, you know. I want to get through to people, I want to make people smile, I want to soften that hard space. In some sense, the flying of the jumbos into the World Trade Centres was a response against that inhuman architecture. And that may be the greatest artwork of the 21st century and maybe the greatest artwork of the 20th century was crop circles and I think Stencilism combines both of those things. It's a response to the architecture and it's kind of an ephemeral, natural, organic response. And in that sense, I think it's really beautiful. Hopefully it'll continue to grow. I don't think it'll crash and burn. Maybe it you know, might drop off a little bit. Maybe it'll just keep going and going and spread like wildfire to all the cities, you can say. I think maybe the, um, the sort of consumerist infatuation with it might dissipate over the next year or two, but I think as a medium it's, it's destined to grow. People are um, inspired by each other and you know, continue to, to do that and to, to make new things. So yeah, I think it can only grow. I think it'll sort of always be around just like any other subculture I think the people who sort of care about it the most will just keep doing it and um, yeah it'll just keep sort of perpetuating itself by the, the people who live for it and I don't think anyone can stop that or it ever will. Doing stenciling and doing street art is really empowering and if it empowers other people to think about something or to take action about something then it's great and it's doing its job seeing people from all walks of life appreciating street art is really great and I hope it continues.